All right, you guys, I am so excited to finally share with you guys the play-by-play -play of my at-home DIY closet boutique. This was a big DIY project. I'm not gonna sit here and act like it wasn't. As you see here, first I'm removing our baseboards so I can take up the carpet. I did not want carpet in the closet because I want a boutique, right? This was actually kind of difficult to do. I didn't have all of the tools, so I had to use a makeshift with the hammer and the screwdriver, but we got it done. Look at that, pulling up the carpet. It was actually easier than I thought. Thank God my mom was there to help because the tack board that it's stapled down on was kind of difficult. Get all of that up and out of the way. And I needed knee pads for this part too. I went and got some of those later on. Look at mom helping as usual. You guys, she's so bomb. All right, my 50 level visit <laughs> to Lowe's. Lowe's, listen, Lowe's, Lowe's, I need you to holler at me. But no, seriously, you guys, was in Lowe's, having fun, um, looking at things that I probably didn't need, but Lowe's has helped me with everything. Um, there's gonna be a person that you see named Zach. There he is in the back. Zach was phenomenal. Um, he almost took pride just as much on our project as we did. Look at him carrying everything over. Got all of my materials from Lowe's actually for the entire project. The wood, um, the caulk, the paint, all of my tools, you name it. If it was used for this closet, I got it at Lowe's. Me just pushing away. Thank God for my mom. She's just sitting here getting this footage. <laughs> Made me feel like I had my own personal paparazzi. All right, yes, you guys listen. Lowe's, they don't do project cuts, so don't say it's a project. Just say you need some wood cut because they're gonna try to act like they don't wanna do it for a project. But I'm so thankful that we were able to get it cut because I do have the circular saw and stuff, but I needed the big tools that they had. A new home. <laughs> Look at my mom, y'all. She captured everything. And we're back to the house. You guys, I probably made at least like 15 trips to Lowe's. Be better than me. Plan accordingly. I, I will say some things we just didn't know that we would need. It was all a learning process. That's why it's DIY. Cleaning up as you go is key, <laughs> for sure. So here we are, we have a whole gutted blank canvas. Um, I did put up that that um, light fixture a while back, so we kept it there. So here you see we are building the baseboard. This is the start of the entire project after you gut everything. This is the platform for the closet. This is what it will stand on. This is what's going to make it start to be a built-in. I didn't want space on the bottom or the top. I wanted a complete build out from the floor to the ceiling. I'll be making an appearance because we probably needed some strength. <laughs> All right, so here we go and we're gonna go ahead and spackle those holes. So when you take down the wire racks that are standard in a home, sometimes it can kind of mess up and leave big because they had to have the drywall anchors so it can leave some holes. So we had to spackle everything and get it ready for paint. Now, let me tell y'all what I did wrong. See, this was another, it was so many unexpected issues. So my mom laughed at me. I purchased the wrong color paint. As you can see, it clear as day in this video, that is gray. In my defense, it said nebulous white or something like that. And I mean, I said, I thought it was white. The paint was gray. And I just knew, I was like, I cannot use it. So you should see now we went back and bought more paint. <laughs> Shout out to Lowe's for exchanging it for me. But I just was like, um, I have boutique dreams and under no circumstance can I have a gray closet with gray shelving. Like I didn't want it. White me, please. So that was a whole nother, extra hour or so to our project. But what Jasmine get once Jasmine gets, and so we are back at the white. So now we're gonna go ahead and start building out everything. This is when all of the measurements and patience comes into play because it was literally like putting together a puzzle. Something that I've never completed before in my life is a puzzle, but thank God for my mom because there were a few times I was like, um, I think I might be in over my head. <laughs> Thank God for power tools. 
Okay, you guys, that is the Tarva dresser. This is what I built the entire closet around. I purchased two of them from Ikea. Um, I wasn't building no dressers, y'all, but <laughs> the Tarva dressers are perfect. So if you happen to use this layout, do it around the Tarva dressers. Um, they're nice, they're wide, and it's unfinished. Well, it's finished wood, but it's unfinished, so you can paint it along with everything else, so it blends seamless. Mom got working because I was probably at work. <laughs> That's the one thing. The way that my job works, sometimes I have to go, but thank God my mom was here and she was able to do a lot of the work and complete a lot of the things while I was away. Nice and white, platform in. We're looking good. All right, you guys, this is the Craig jig. It creates the pocket holes that you need to go ahead and bind your wood together. And they have pocket screws as well. And this gives you a seamless, because it goes in at like a 45 degree angle into the wood from the other side. That way you don't have to see any nail heads or screw heads. The mom getting it done. <laughs> See those pocket holes there? This is three quarter inch plywood. So the pocket holes go right in there. And once she got everything situated <laughs> and did a makeshift workbench, she was able to go ahead and get everything cut out. We're coming along. You guys, this is one of those projects that it's like for every task that you finish, you feel like, oh my God, when is the end? <laughs> but it all started coming together. I think I started to really get excited once we got these panels up because it started to kind of take shape and form of a closet. Look at my closet. Y'all, this part right here got on my whole nerves. I don't even know why it's in the edit, but it's okay because this this is what DIY is like. Look at it. It, it just didn't want to work. Every time, every time I'm like, yeah, I can pop this in real quick. Something happened. A, a, a bit break. Uh, yeah, I was getting real frustrated, but we got her done. I was just to the point where like, we can spackle it, caulk it, paint it, and call it a day. <laughs> I think that I probably completed more floors of a Stairmaster in this project than ever before. <laughs> so now we have to continue to assemble the closet. It's coming together. I wanted to build out, remember I said, from the floor to the ceiling. So as you see there, we created the whole cubby that goes all along the top. This is gonna be a space for shoes and just extra storage. And trip number 378, 9,450 <laughs> to Lowe's because we had to pick up more stuff. You guys, this was a headache putting in these shells for the shoe racks. You guys, I mean, I love that they were deep enough where it could hold at least two pair of shoes across um, and then the shelf in the back is 22 inches deep so I was able to put two sets of shoes behind each other so that worked perfect because your girl got a lot of shoes <laughs> I look cute with a drill huh <laughs> y'all I it's, it's not a project if I don't make it fun look at it it's coming together you guys I'm I was so excited I, at this point I was just like are we done yet my mom looked at me like girl no <laughs> nowhere near <laughs> I 
Gotta have them protective goggles because that sawdust in them eyes is not fun. First of all, hi guys! <laughs> this is my baby. Hi! <laughs> this is Superwoman here. No. She lead, I follow. <laughs> yeah, look what we did. Oh, some of y'all are like, what is she talking about? Oh, because you're not positive. You know how I always do this. I know. Look, look what we did. <laughs> we built my dream. Closet built my dream. Closet. Can you believe it? From scratch. Look at the details. Details. That thing over there looked like a damn library. I'm just mad at it. <laughs> it, it, yeah. it gave us some fits, but it's okay. It did. It gave us some fits. It did. But it's okay. And like, what do you guys see what we do with this floor? It's gonna be beautiful. All right, so to make this project easier, we needed a workbench and we went online and we found one because again, your girl's still kind of new at this. So I wasn't about to invest in no thousand dollar table, um, but they had this table for like $19.99 um, at Harbor Freight. I think Freight, Freight, Harbor Freight, Harbor Freight, one of them. <laughs> Right. Um, and it worked great. My mom put it together and then this allowed us because we had to cut all of the trim. So, um, baby, we I'm over 30, mommy over 50. We wouldn't better be bending over to do that. But I did want to add trim to everything so it can have a smooth finish. Um, I got three quarter inch trim and it, it was just perfect. It fit perfect. Look at that. Right there, flush. It's the little things like this that really elevates your project. So although it's DIY, taking the time to go ahead and add professional finishes such as trim and sanding properly, caulking properly, that is going to give you a complete professional end result on a budget. <laughs> All right, mommy, I was at work, so mommy was in there sanding stuff down and getting it all prepped and ready. Look at her go. Yeah, I love my mom. <laughs> we did reuse some of the trim. So the trim that you see is white. We went ahead and reused the ones that we had took down and just added. it. But look how we're adding that trim to the top. That is what's gonna make your project look complete and finished. You can opt not to do it if you want, but for me, I wanted my boutique to look like the real deal. And I think we nailed it. All right, as she's starting to sand everything down, she got them, that face mask on, <laughs> much needed. But sanding everything is really, really important too, because again, we're painting. This isn't a finished wood, right? Like we're painting this. So, you know, wood has all of its natural um, issues, I guess you could say, uh, you know, different little faults. So we sand it all down, get a really smooth, even finish so that when we apply the paint, everything can finish smoothly. And we get the painting. I do have a paint sprayer, you guys. Um, we did a lot by hand because the little crevices and stuff, the paint, uh, the spray painter can kind of get to it. But the first coat, I recommend going ahead and doing it by hand. And then you can finish off the second coat with the paint sprayer. And we purchased a really good paint, too. It had um, primer already inside. So that helped. <laughs> and um, I chose the satin finish as well because I just like it's not too much sheen but not matte it just looks really nice look at it look, look, look at look at this look what i made <laughs> i'm so excited look how good it looks the white just now y'all see why i couldn't go ahead and go with the gray and i bought five gallons of that paint so it took a lot for me to like especially if i didn't know if they were exchanging or not but lowe's had a policy that allowed me to thank god but yeah white is what it needed to be hubby went ahead and put the dressers together for me why do you have to say that? But I remember when I bought that. 
What? He's still on two. I didn't get all of these. Oh wow. <laughs> I know you're not fucking talking. <laughs> Unless she did. <laughs> Here we go. So, y'all, my mom was so excited to do this. These are the paperback floors. She loves this technique. We actually did it in the salon that I had before, but it's literally what it's called. It's paperback floors. She's cleaning and prepping the floor, and then you take a glue and water mixture together, and you tear apart the strips. The more you tear it apart, the more of like a mosaic type of finish it will be. Um, look at y'all look at her she got her head she got her um kneecaps on her knee her knee guards on but you just lay it all down with the glue smooth it out look at it it looks like stone so you let that dry and then you'll finish it off with your stain of choice i went with like a grayish color stain because i thought that that would look really nice with the white kind of give it like a concrete look for that boutique look that i'm going for absolutely perfect but what I do love too is that we didn't put you pay attention when I was talking about those finishes we didn't put the trim in yet because you want to finish your floor so that's with the stain and then you're going to finish it off with coats of poly and let it dry so I just finished applying stain on the floor it's a slate gray it looks great it looks like slate on that paper bag finish it's going to really make the room pop. Good job, baby. It's that stone in the paper bag. It looks like stone. All right, I wanted my little pocket lights that y'all saw that I put in my kitchen before. These things are golden. You don't have to have any wiring or anything. They're battery operated, but it comes with the remote, easy to assemble. And I wanted them to be put in the shelves to put like a little spotlight. <laughs> That's what we did. I will link these as well. And there you have it, y'all. My custom boutique closet from start to finish. And I can't wait to see what project I have next. Do you love? Let me know. Comment, share, like, and subscribe. <laughs> Thank you for watching.